This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Everybody, it's Alex Bennett, and it is the Ramble, and the Ramble goes on until midnight and uh, here on Eastern Daylight Time. Okay, uh, and uh, if it's ten oh five in the United States on the East Coast, where you are, somewhere in the world, then we're live. Otherwise, uh, this is a recording, but you can enjoy it and enjoy the uh, Citizens Panel, which will be coming up in just a little bit. But meanwhile, we've got our Guests to talk to today, as we always do on Thursday. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only. Well, there's just one, and there is only. Stephen Pearl. Hello, Stephen. <laughs> Ooh, that is good coffee. Hey, everybody. Good to be here. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good cup of joe. Wink, wink. Oh, God. Uh, how are you? <laughs> good. How are you doing? Oh. Got, all the, got the phone fixed. We can talk now. Okay, it must be Thursday, so therefore it must be Stephen Pearl. Stephen Pearl Day. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, you you had Tuesday, trouble. This must now, be let, 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 let's let's talk about this for a second because there are certain of you that are say into into computers and understand computers and understand the technology, and others that don't. Okay, you're one of the ones I think that don't. I know on and off. Actually, I once I once tried to upload somebody, and I accidentally burnt the synagogue to the ground. So I'm not too good at this. <laughs> I, 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 tried, I tried copying a disc, and I accidentally started a war with Malta. It doesn't work for me. Yeah. Well, here's the thing that I didn't uh, that I didn't uh, get today. We tried to call you, and you were having trouble with your phone because your big phone, phone your phone would only work on speaker. And, yeah. and, of course, it sounded terrible, and it was horrible for us to try and do an interview. So what did you sure. do? So you went down to the, uh, the the cell phone place? I went down to the telephone hospital, to the old cell phone place, and the guy looked at it, and he went, <laughs> and then it was fixed because there was schmutz in my mic hole. Oh, yeah, I had filth in my mic hole. There, was, the, the there was schmutz in your mic hole? Yeah, it was like the size of like a tenth of a pinhole, and... Uh, I don't know how to get smuts out of there because it's in my pocket. And something's going to get in there, but uh, I never, the year I, I, had the phone. I never had schmutz get into my mic- microphone hole. Not me until now, and then uh, I could I could hear everybody fine, but they couldn't hear me. It was like a long distance call from the fifties. Wow, it's like well, it's like it's like calling bubbles. Yeah, uh, uh, it sounded like that. But. Yeah, yeah. So so where are you calling from? Are you at home or are you outside? Oh, or? I'm back from the telephone hospital. Yeah, they're, they're not that far. They're about a mile away. So I zip there and I zip back and, uh, you know, it's uh, California. So there's parking. So I uh, had no problem. So he immediately knew what it was that he had to blow out some Well, actually, stuff. he went at it with a hammer and a saw and a gallon of chocolate syrup. But uh, he, he finally figured out, oh, there's, there's schmutz in your mic hole. So the, I said, well, the, that's the, fine. The, the, didn't, se- out. didn't seem to help. I see. Okay. Well, anyway. So, uh, nothing helped. So now, he he now, hammered it. He sawed it. He threw it down the steps like a slinky. But then we found out what it was. Well, you see, you, you're one of the people. I'm, and the other technical guy that I have problems with is, is Bubbles. Bubbles it, totally is out of the loop. I mean, he's dial-up, you know. He's dial-up, man. He's like, <laughs> you got to hear a Jimi Hendrix concert to get online. It. Yeah, yeah. No, he's he's he, he he's still he's one. He said though there are like something like thirty thousand dial-ups still in San Francisco. <laughs> I know. I know. He, he doesn't have a sound card either, so if he watches YouTube, he can't hear anything. He can just see the pretty pictures. I mean, my mother, my mother, my mother died, so I thought that was the end of dial-up. You know, <laughs> no, bubbles. But bubbles is the last holdout. I think he still lives where there's a postal zone, San Francisco, seventeen, well, California. Well, the best thing he told me is that he got his dial-up from Fry's. You know what Fry's is? You know that the sure. supercomputer store. And sure. I'm thinking, Fry's, the supercomputer store, is offering dial-up. Why? <laughs> well, he probably got it in 1991. Who knows? Why? You know. <laughs> For bubbles, you know, maybe he's a good customer. He probably like uh, rents a lot of porn there. Who knows? I mean, this goes back to a time when you had a thing called a coupler, and you took your handset and put it in the coupler, and it was like, and then it would it would hear the squeaks and the moans and things like that, and then you know, but I mean, it's just uh, so some of you guys amaze me that you just 
you're so out of that loop. You know. Oh, I, I eat, Bubble still has one of those clam top shell phones, which I had until about two years ago, and I still have it if it didn't die on me, and then I had to go modern. Oh, you mean like one of the uh, the communicators from Star Trek? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Spock, yeah. Well, I often so, uh, I have, had one of those for a long time. I, I often Bubble still has it. I often pointed that out as being uh, those clamshells as being art imitating life or life imitating art. In that, exactly. that was what the communicator was on Star Trek. And so, when the first uh-huh. cell phones came out, you had those flip phones. You know, That's the right. clamshell flips. It was the future, and Star Trek was supposed to be 200 years in the future, yeah. and it came out like 50 years ago, so uh, we beat them by like 100-something years. Yeah, and now we just have a flat slab that you're talking right. to. Yep, that yeah. everybody looks at, and they cross the street and get hit by a runaway egg truck. Now, looks now what, what, what kind of cell phone do you have, though? I have. I got it at Newberry's for a half a dollar, as long as I bought a goldfish, and uh, I have a, a Samsung. Yeah. And, and do Japanese you, for nothing but trouble. Thank you, Jack Carter. And, and, and do you have a camera in it and stuff like that? Oh, it's got a camera. It doubles on sacks. It walks the pet, the ferret. Well, you everything. see, what we could do sometime is if if I can get you to use Skype, but I don't know if you know how to use Skype. Actually, I actually did uh, about a year ago. I did a Skype interview on this thing with some nice people from Long Island. And now I look at all the apps, I can't find the Skype app. I don't know where it is. Well, we should find the Skype app for you and then see what I'm doing now with Bob Rubin and and Will Durst because they they have cameras and they have Skype and whatever, is I just simply uh, show them. To the audience, oh, okay. you, they can there you see. Go. You know, I don't want to look at Will. He's icky. You know. Now but, I know uh, we'll okay. never we'll never see bubbles unless I get him to some no. place where somebody's got a uh, Skype. You know. You want to see bubbles? Picture ET with hair. That's bubbles. Okay, e- now I don't have to look at. E- yeah. Well, I don't know. You know, <laughs> bubbles comedy is very dependent upon his facial expressions. Without a doubt. Without a doubt, you, know, you can't look like you know uh, George Clooney and do something like that. You so to not like not have his facial expressions is kind of you know, hinky, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, I he be- rocks the house. Well, no, I remember when he did when he did Letterman. Everybody was going, "I wonder how Bubs is going to do on Letterman." Uh-huh. And then he killed. And one of the reasons he killed was on TV. It's a close up. Yeah. And so, yep. so you got those facial expressions from Bubs, and he all he had to do was make one of them, and people would laugh. Uh, you know, so I mean, he's yep. a, he's a very very visual comedian, although I don't think he ever realized it. You know, <laughs> deadpan is he he makes Buster Keaton look like a speed freak. My yeah, God, yeah. So uh, you been working? I like and yes, I did them um, at the punchline on uh, June twentieth, and we just did a big Holy City Zoo reunion show with me and Bubbles and Durst and uh, and Mark Pitta and Dan St. Paul and Mike Meehan and a bunch of people. And uh, where was I after? Oh, I did the, the San Jose Improv. That was fun. Although I hate driving back from San Jose, I always feel greasy for some reason. Explain when to I drive people. Drive back from San Jose, yeah. and feel dirty. I don't know why. But Explain I do. to people the Holy City Zoo because most people don't know Holy, what we're talking about. The, you know, the Holy City Zoo was this little wooden urine-smelling cabin that. With a little stage that sat about maybe seventy people, that would pack. If you if you were on stage and you fell off the stage, you hit the far wall. You hit the far wall exactly, exactly. You could not play handball in that place. How many people? How many people could sit? How many people could they fit in there at one time? Maybe. Well, let's see. We find out whenever Robin went on. (laughs) People away from the next neighbor who would hear about it and pack the place. So um, maybe. 80, maybe 80. Maybe 80? 80, 80? That seems maybe like a not lot. Even, not even that many. I don't know. I'm not good with numbers like that, but uh, it, it, not many people. It wouldn't take many people to fill the place. More, in, you in, put more college students into a phone booth back in 1959. Than in, in, in most cities, there were these comedy clubs that I like to call gymnasiums. Yep. You know, and this is where you went to work out. You know, it wasn't. You weren't going to make big money by paying, playing the place. You, you had to play the big nope. club for that. But exactly. but this is where you went to work your material out. This Robin would exactly. go in there and work material out. You know. Yep. And I, yep. you know, I I did a lot of stage time hosting shows and things like that. And I never was particularly intimidated by being up on stage. But the only time I was ever intimidated on stage was being at the Holy City Zoo. Really. Yeah. Because it was so small, because it was so small, yeah, I felt the audience could jump me. 
You know, <laughs> they could. They'd be too stoned to do that, though. No, but, and uh, people really like it was. It was where everybody ended up if they had a set somewhere else or were doing something somewhere else. They always end up at the Holy City Zoo at the end of the night. So yeah. that was one of the fun things but about the thing, it. The thing is, I could stand out in front of a crowd of nine thousand people, which I did when we did the Frost Amphitheater, sure. and not think it. not think twice about it. But I would stand sure. there on the stage of the Holy City Zoo and piss my pants. <laughs> they can get me. They can touch me here. Yeah, no, no really. No security, no security. Really. And the thing is, people say, and I'm sure you know this experience, they say, how can you appear before 9,000 people? And the fact is, when you got 9,000 people, it's just, it's like Mount Rushmore out there, you know? It's a mass. It's it, just it, a big mass. It's, yeah. a, it's a big mass, exactly. It's yeah. a lot easier to play to. It's a lot easier to not get yeah. frightened about. It's yeah. when the audience is smaller... And the hecklers are prominent that life yep. becomes a living hell. That's right. You can see the pot marks on their tattoos. Well, let's, let's talk about hecklers for a second. Because I was... Hecklers! They should hang well, 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 there's this show on Showtime called I'm Dying Up Here. Uh, and, yeah, I saw the first one on YouTube. Too. And I, I, I don't know about you, but I felt, having experienced a lot of that, that it was, it's pretty authentic. You know? When you say it was I authentic, guess so. I, I wasn't really doing it in the early '70s when this takes place, but uh, you know, I watched it. And anything Rick Overton is, I hope, is a huge success because I love Rick. And yeah, he's a great comedian, him. a great actor, and a great guy. So whatever it is, I'm for it. I don't need to watch it myself because it's make believe. And number two, I saw a, a thousand times more drama hanging out with Sam Kennison. So <laughs> yeah, I've had my share of comedy drama. But yet, yeah, it, it's not necessarily the '70s because I came into comedy about the '80s. It, it, yeah. Yes, it is the 70s, but it really is the experience that went into the 80s. I mean, I felt yeah. a lot of it rang true. The fears that comics have, you know, uh -huh. the angst that they have in trying to make it, you know, the whole thing about and how getting... how fucked up every single one of us is. I remember, you know, if you went on Carson, uh, the big deal wasn't getting on Carson. It was that he asked you to come over and sit down. Exactly. You know. Did he get on the show? Good. Did he get the couch? No. Okay. Better luck next time. Yeah. Right. There was always something higher. Did you? Did you? I was on. I was on Carson. Well, good. Did you? Did you panel? No. Oh, well, too bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. sorry. See you later. You're a, you're a worker, B. You're not a king. Yeah. Yeah. But the minute I remember those days, uh, the minute that sure. Johnny would wave a comic over, that was oh, the yeah, beginning. A... That was the beginning of a gigantic career. That's right. That's right. Look at Freddie Prinze. He waved him over. And then, like, he's hosting the show. And then he's then he's got a big series, and then he puts a hole in his head. But that's the last part. But. Yeah, but I remember. Uh, you remember Roseanne, right? Sure. You knew probably knew Roseanne when she did the comedy competition in San Francisco. Yeah, uh, she sure. used to she used to come and sit in my audience every day, and I never even put her on the air because I didn't think this fat woman could be funny. Uh, uh, but I liked her, and she was hungry, and I took her out to breakfast, and I fed her. I and some other people kept her alive while she was in San Francisco. And uh -huh. and all of a sudden, one day, I'm watching The Tonight Show, and he says, and a new comedian, Roseanne Barr. And out comes Ro yep. and I go, Roseanne? You know, yep. and son of a bitch, if she doesn't kill, and then he gives the wave. Come over. Yep. And you knew She's right then and there she... Time. It, she had a career, you know? Yep. Big time uh, career. She still and, has it. And so these are some of the things that are on that show that, that kind of ring true, you know? Uh, yep. That, that uh, is the, it, were the hopes, the dreams, and everything else. And just the whole thing about being a comic. You know, some comics made it and some comics didn't. Some were better than That's others. Right. And the ones that were better than others didn't necessarily make it. That's right. You know, um but I, I think it's a very, I, I think it's a very good show. I think it's a good representation. Of, yeah, of what I like the, the one I saw. But they should just say it's the '80s instead of it's the '70s because I, I don't know what was going on in the early '70s. Well, yeah, it, David Brenner, it, it felt, Robert it, Klein, and a couple other guys. Well, it's you know really the lead woman's supposed to be Mitzi Shore. Yeah, uh, I know. they say it is. Some people say it is, and it's yeah, Goldie well, Mitzi. They, what's, no, what's the, the no, the, they're saying that it isn't because they don't want to have to pay oh. money to Mitzi Shore. Oh yeah, is Mitzi <laughs> Mitzi still alive? Isn't she? Yeah, she's alive. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of? Yeah. yeah, she's not in good shape. You know, it's like in her 80s. And, was she kind yeah, of... Well, I, I never met Mitzi. Was she kind of like that? Uh, I never... She was really nice to me. She took me in the first time I auditioned. That took me as a paid regular. And I always got spots. And I never got involved in the politics. When I'd see her, I'd say hello. 
exchanged a couple of pleasantries, and I never got too close. I never got involved in the pot. I tell my jokes. I hung out. I went home. So <laughs> she was nice to me. That's all I know. That's all you know. Yeah. That's all I know. I don't know nothing. Same. Ah, so, yeah. I just I stayed on the edge, and I didn't go into the fiery circle. That's yeah. Same with Kennison. Yeah. Uh, well, well, Kinnison worked the worked the, uh, the what was it, the the uh, comedy uh, uh, what was what's the name of the club? I forget the name of it. Uh, <laughs> what the comedy store? The comedy store. Uh, no, yeah, yeah. That was that was Kinnison's hangout. He got me in there. He forced Missy to watch me when I auditioned at the end of nineteen eighty six, and uh, by June of eighty seven, I was living in L A. and I've been starving ever since. Now, in, in in the TV show, they talk about the you know, there's a room called the cellar, and then there's the main room. Did they have two rooms like that at the comedy yeah, store? Yeah, comedy store had three. There's a little bitty one called the belly room on top where the newbies go. It was originally for women comics, and now it's uh, whoever somebody wants to work on some stuff or somebody wants to put, work on a one man show, or whatever they go up there. Yeah, and uh, there's the original room, and then there's the main room, and they're kind of adjacent to each other, and they're both fun rooms. Or you know, I don't know the place like now. I was there back when it counted. Now, did so, you did uh, you did you do the big room? I did all of them. Yeah, I did. I did the big room uh, plenty. I had to. I followed Sam in the big room. I followed Dice Clay in the big room. I I worked with the big wigs. Yeah, all of them. Sam was good to you, wasn't he? He was very nice. He was, you know, I never had a problem with him, but once again, I was on the edge of that circle, and I never stepped in it. And uh, I, I don't think he messed with people he knew would hit him back if they had to. But no, Sam was real. I got along great with him, so I never had a problem because with Sam. Because I, I, I got along terrifically with Sam. Uh, you know, yeah, he uh, just keep, keep a friendly biz, arm's length, and hang out whenever you know. I was always invited to the parties. I usually went. We had a good time. And uh, I knew usually when it was time to go home. Not all the time, but most of the time. Uh, what, so what, what he was, was good what, to me. Sam, though, was beset by demons, wasn't he? Better believe it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, and and w- do you think those demons really would have prevented him from if he hadn't given into those demons, he'd still be alive today? Or do you think? Uh, you know, it's no, like, I think he'd be. I think he would have had a heart attack or a stroke. He was a big boy. He had a couple of episodes before. I don't know if the blow had anything to do with it, but no, I don't think. The Kennison, there's only one brother, there's four Kennison brothers, only one of them is still alive. Really? Of course, there's one suicide and a car accident, and I think, I don't know how Well, Richard the thing died, is, but, here's, uh, the, here's the amazing thing about Sam Kinison. In <laughs> case people don't know who we're talking about, Sam Kinison was a comic and a very wild child, as it were. Mm-hmm. And he, um, he got killed driving to Las Vegas when a drunk hit his car. Yeah, he was going to Laughlin, Nevada, yeah. when he got killed in needles from kids, seventeen-year-old kids. And 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 somebody stated after the fact, and it was quite, I think, perceptive, that it's just really strange. We all knew that Sam would die from drugs, but not in somebody else's body. Exactly, exactly. You know, somebody, you know that, that was the cosmic joke that he was killed by a drunk driver. Yeah, and uh, yeah, God sense of humor work. You twisted bastard. I mean, and just I mean, uh, just an amazing turn of events. You know, one of those kind of things where you hear about it and you go, what? Yeah. Sam's you dead? Go, yeah. What? Yeah. If, well, if, if you're, well, he drove his car into a tree. Okay, I can believe that. And I was going to a gig and some kid hit him head on. Oh, holy crap. That sucks. Well, you hear about, you hear about other kind of tragic things like that. Um, um, uh, my old friend, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, God. My mind's a blank today um but uh he had cancer and uh he went to several bouts of cancer um oh uh, bob shimmel bob shimmel bob shimmel bob shimmel bob shimmel ladies and gentlemen was a brilliant comic to begin with oh he's amazing uh but his life was one giant (laughs) cluster fuck hell (laughs) it was he was job he was job Literally, that's the best, comedy. Oh. best way to describe him. This guy, he had a son who had cancer, yeah. and that he went and worked like crazy to be able to keep the kid uh, in doctors and stuff until the kid died yeah. at 11, I kid think. died? Oh, my God, yeah. Oh, horrible. And then he came down with uh, cancer. And then he cured the cancer, and then he came down with something else, and it was one thing after another. Okay, Uh and finally, the last time I saw Bob, he said, I've got to go in for like a kidney transplant or something like that. I mean, there wasn't a human part in him that was working right. 
Yeah, he's with the Bionic Comics. It's amazing. Hey, so you're going, you know, any day I'm going to get the get the call. Hey, did you hear uh, uh, yeah. Schimmel's dead? And one day I do get the call. Hey, do you hear Schimmel's dead? But how did he die? His daughter was driving him down the street and hit a, I don't know, a, a tree or something. She did something or swerved and the car turned out. Oh, God. So either way, yeah, she's, yeah. she's going to be on the couch forever, man. That's horrible. So here's oh, a guy. Here's a guy. Yeah, if, you, if somebody said he was dead, you went, oh, I knew he was going to go eventually because one thing after another was trying to get him. But yeah, what, what someone, gets him? Something wanted him. A fucking car accident. Fucking car accident. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah, and it's his daughter's fault. Holy crap. Of course, an accident, but uh, holy shit! If, uh, oh, yeah, scary. Yeah, I have my. If you're uh, listening I, to this, Simmel's daughter, whoever you are, it's the, it just happened. Don't yeah, blame yourself. Yeah, I, I had uh, I had a I had a, a guy here uh, that was my uh, my engineer at uh, Sirius XM who went out with his daughter because he came by one day with his daughter and then they hooked up and went out. You know, uh-huh. and uh, he never was in contact with her after that. But I just said to myself, you know, what she's got to live with. On that, uh-huh. you know, oh yeah, yeah, and I don't think oh, the accident oh. was even her fault. I think there was some mechanical. Somebody might have stopped short. Or yeah. something. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. It's just did what she had to do, and boom, it shit happens. So what? What it really amounts to is you never know. You know, you never know, and you're gonna you got to get off the roller coaster sooner or later. So <laughs> there you go. Now here's the here's the here's the, the the sum total of it though. Comics live to be quite old, on the average. Uh-huh. Uh, and I think part, I think part of it is because you can keep working, you know, so that even if well, you're, I should have died years ago. <laughs> well, I mean, look at Irwin Corey. Well, how old was he? One hundred and three. Something like that. One hundred and three. Yeah. Oh, you man. Know? Uh, I mean, Burns and people like that. I mean, they live to be incredible ages or yeah. or they die young like Bill Hicks. Or they die. young. Yep. You too know, much this, too much that. So Bill, who Bill knows? Hicks, Bill Hicks. Probably one of the most brilliant comics. I think you'll agree that we've, on, that's ever Bill, that's, that we've Bill, ever come across. Mm-hmm. Um, it dies at thirty-two of pancreatic cancer. Yeah, I mean, come on, a disease that doesn't even get thirty-two-year-olds. I know that's that's real weird because you never hear anybody get that, that that young age. It's insane, just out of nowhere. Well, okay, you're sick. Now you're dead. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah. and and uh, Gary. Uh, I remember I was the one that told the Letterman show that that, that Hicks was dead because I had just gotten the word he was dead, and I called up my friend Shecky over at the Letterman show, and I said, did you hear about Hicks? And he said, what did he do now? Because, you know, they had a little little confrontation with Hicks with yeah. com- with material and stuff, although L- Letterman's always felt guilty about it, okay? Yeah, uh, I know. He finally had Hicks' mother on, he, played he, the clip years yeah, later. Yeah, and said, I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, because mistake. because what happened was, folks, is he he was on like the first week that Letterman was on CBS, and he did his act, and he went back and he's to the hotel room going, I finally did my act. You know, people will understand who Bill Hicks is, and he walked away from it feeling really good, and then he gets a call, we're not going to broadcast it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, we're yeah, not going to put it on the air because we got some problems. Well, it was because it was the beginning of Letterman being at CBS, and he didn't want to, you know. Yeah, I didn't want to make waves with the suits and blah, blah, blah. Exactly. Yeah. And so in, in subsequent years, he felt guilty about that, especially because, you know, he then died. So I got from Shecky, well, what did he do now? And I said, he's dead. And he said, what? I said, yes, pancreatic cancer. And the last time I had seen him was at the um, punchline. And I said to him, so, uh, so how's it going? He says, it's going okay. He said, but I'm getting out of show business. That was the way. That was his way of kind of saying, "I'm going off to die," but I didn't know that. Oh God! You know, and That's he knew so. at that time that he had cancer, that he had pancreatic oh, cancer, and uh, uh, he was dead within a year. And it, to me, it was uh, one of the most tragic losses to comedy ever. Ever. That was horrible. He did that. He did not deserve. He's a good guy too. It's not like he was a prick and oh, what he said. He's a nope. he's a really good person. We're in a movie together called Comedy's Dirtiest Dozen from 1988, if anyone's interested. Oh, really? Yep. We, we filmed it in New York. They flew us. Uh, we did the Morton Downey show, and then they like, we did the movie the next night. And Bill's in it, and I'm in it, and who else? Otto with a late Otto Peterson of Otto and George, X-rated ventriloquist, the star girl, and a good bunch of folks. Tim Allen before he made it, Chris Rock before he made it. It's a good movie. And, of course, Bill is absolutely stunningly brilliant in it and of course when, like when people see the movie that, now they go whatever happened to Stephen Pearl 
Oh, he got a haircut and got his teeth fixed, and <laughs> he's a hotel manager now in uh, Bakersfield. Hey, always good talking to you. Good Let's, talking to you, uh, my friend. We'll do it again soon. In a couple of weeks, we got it. Anyway, thank you. Now that we got the schmutz out of my mic hole, we're ready for action. Ladies and gentlemen, the frantic mind that is Stephen Pearl. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, well, thank you very much to Stephen Pearl for joining us tonight, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see him in a couple of weeks. Uh, and... Uh, if you hear a if you hear a little rumbling in the background, it's the air conditioner. Um, uh, this time of the year, I have to have air conditioning sound, otherwise it gets cold and it gets warm in here. I mean, toasty, because I have all this equipment and stuff like that. Anyway, let me uh, let me uh, let me uh, go here and turn on uh, the um, uh, the uh, stuff here. Yeah, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the Skype lines uh let me turn it on too i have to turn it on so people can call and then this is where i sit here and wait and wonder if anybody's going to call me tonight um but uh if you want to call me uh if easy way to find out how to call me is you go to uh <clears throat> gabnet.net and everything you need to know there is there on how to how to call the program using skype or using the phone number we have a phone number as well and you will also see it if you're watching us on Facebook Live, you'll see the uh, the GabNet uh, ID, which is GabNet Live. Uh, that's what you call to get us on Skype. And then there's also a phone number there if you want to call us using uh, your grandmother's phone, if that's your, uh, uh, your form of being a Luddite. So anyway, uh, so this is the point at which I, I sit here and I wait to see if anybody's going to call. Phil is not going to call tonight, so it's, you know, for those of you who don't call when Phil is calling, uh, give us a call. Uh, and uh, I will just sit here and, and stall like crazy waiting for people to call. Last night, by the way, record numbers of people watching the, uh, the, the, the feed. Um, I, you, you know, I usually look at the amount at the end of the night, and when it came up, I went, wow uh we had a lot of people last night listening so uh, you know i mean there are times when i wonder whether i should continue this little folly because you know as the old saying goes um insanity is doing the same thing over again with the same result and uh you know i sometimes i wonder if we aren't doing this over and over again with just the same result and whether it's worth my time it's worth your time it's worth the effort uh, to do what we're doing here. Uh, I, I sincerely believe it's a different form of, of talk show and in, in a way of presenting a talk show. And so I'm hoping that, uh, you know, that you will uh, participate. But anyway, so on nights like tonight, I go, well, is anybody going to call? And I'm sitting here twiddling my thumbs. And uh, let me see here. Wow, talk about unrelated. Oh, no, that was something else. Oh. This was something, by the way. This I, I today I got this thing that said that uh, you've been friends with uh, Mark Thorner for seven years. Do you want to share that? And I said sure. So it went on my site, you know, my Facebook page. Blah 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 blah. Mark Thorner and Alex Bennett have been friends now for seven years on Facebook, uh, and truly we have been friends. This is not the kind of friends on Facebook where we use the term very very loosely uh this is uh this is uh, he's a friend and so th that goes up and then somebody writes something and i can't remember what it was exactly let me see here well, here well, here's the comment somebody writes under it uh a tony Squ squire or something says republicans are trying to get the dems to just cave due to the shooting yesterday we can't fall for this bullshit. let's work together they're full of it and Mark writes, what does this have to do with what was just posted? And this is the trouble with Facebook. This is why Facebook sucks. It's the people who somehow, no matter what you put up, always find something out of kilter, non sequitur, to deal with about it. Well, listen, nobody's calling. This is amazing. Nobody. Zero. Zilcho. 
uh, do I, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go for about another two minutes and I'm going to sign off. That's it. I, you know, I, I, I just uh, can't sit here and stall. Uh, so if you're not going to call tonight, then uh, I, I'll just sign off and, you know, the next show can go on. Well, what I'll do is I'll leave two, uh, an hour and a half of dead air and then the next show can come on, you know. Uh, because I, I just, you know, I, tonight, I, on top of that, I have a sinus headache tonight. Uh, I've been having it all day, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm cranky, okay? Well, I see that somebody is calling. Uh, it says TCPP, the Citizen Panel Program. Uh, what, did, what the hell is that? No, don't tell me. I think I know what that is, and if it is, I'm just going to hang up on them. Anyway. Um, once again, uh, give us a call. We're sitting here waiting for your calls. Uh, some nights it starts off and we're just one right after the other, and then other nights nothing. Yeah, hi. Who's this? Who is this? This is uh, Brian. Hear me. Brian? Um, this is a different account. Uh, why are you using a different account, Brian? Uh, just to piss around with Skype, I figured, what the hell, I just... You see, because see because with the new system now, you can use your, uh, you know, you can use your uh, uh, your phone. Oh, really? You updated it? So uh, like, yeah, and, I, I mean, and we can get a picture from you on the phone and everything, yeah. It's also mobile, and uh, I'm, it's, it's... A you, keep, you keep cutting in, <laughs> you keep cutting in and out. Really? You keep. I'm you, sorry. You keep. You keep cutting in and out. Well, I, and it's really uh, annoying. I'm, I'm mobile. Uh, hold on. Let me hang up. I forgot to uh, connect. The, for some reason, the Bluetooth headphones. Well, there's yep. something. There's something. Oh, there different. it is. I see it. Here now. Sorry. Yeah. Hello. Uh, it call call us back when you can, okay? All right. Uh, let me see here. Uh, he, he, here's he, here's here's Renee. Hello, Renee. No, Renee's screwing around too. Now you can use your. Uh, 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 you can uh, use your phone. Oh, really? You updated it? Wait, 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 wait a minute. Turn off. The, turn that off, Renee. I am. I'm trying. I swear. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Okay. Yay. <laughs> now let let's see your picture. Oh wait. Okay, that counts too, huh? Yeah, that that's that's important too. There we that... go. From Hawaii, there's Renee. I didn't it's think I didn't think anybody was going to call tonight. I thought this was going to be that big night when nobody would ever call. Oh come on. You know, what, are you betting on it? <laughs> Sometimes I well I usually when I, I complain about this and then what happens is about two hours later I'm saying well we, we can't take another person we have a full house you know so you know it, it, people and, and you're, you're going to get a lot of calls tonight because you have your on air sign on oh is that the reason why yeah yep. a girlfriend bought me that on air uh, on on the air sign see this see it right back here folks right there. Yeah, and you got it in the shot. Is it, did you change cameras or something? No, or did no, you no. It? This is this is the shot I've always been using. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just I just I moved it. However, ah. long, well, but that was a while ago. So you know. So what? Kind it was of, nice to listen to Stephen Pearl. Yeah. So anyway, I have a, I have a sinus headache again tonight. I don't. Is I don't, it because of the temperature change? The barometric. I I, I it could be that you know. But I, I just been feeling just a little off today, and I was feeling so well for a couple of days, you know. And then my well, late my also posted the temperature. You're like at a hundred, right? What? Today it was ninety. Today it was ninety. Not here. Are you sure? I thought girlfriend posted on her Facebook page. Uh, no, I don't a think so. Of Wait how hot it was. Hold on a second. I'll tell you what it is right now. It okay. is. Uh, it's sixty six right now. And you uh, still have the AC on? Wow. Yeah, well, because, you see, what happens is in this room, we, we oh, boy, uh, Brian's having problems. Um, uh, in this room, uh, even if it is 66, this room has a lot of electronics in it. And so it tends to get warm. I mean, in the winter, I don't need to warm this room. I don't need to turn the radiator on or anything because there's enough incipient heat to keep me going. So... You know, 
Is girlfriend ecstatic now that she's got gas? Actually, she hasn't used it. I'm uh, today. I I was the first one to use it today. I made ribs today. Oh, ooh, rib day. Yeah, I made ribs. I decided somebody better use the. You know, the, we were yelling, <laughs> "Hey, we don't have our gas stove. We don't have gas. We don't have gas. That sucks. It's terrible." And then. You know, when the gas gets turned on, she just sits there and looks at the flame and goes, "That's nice." <laughs> you know, she hasn't cooked anything in the in the in the oven or the stove, or even I, I don't even know if she's used the, the stove top. You know, it's you get out of the habit. Well, she, it, it, what what happened was for people who don't know is that we we had a problem here where there was a fire in the basement and then the. Uh, fire department came and turned off the gas to the building and then we went uh, six months without gas you know so well let's see well, here this not only that but for anybody who cooks it's not just six months without gas yeah. but she, you, and you both did it on one of those little uh, yeah. grills yeah. And, right right yeah so okay. yeah yay yeah hello hello yeah. how you doing Am I coming in clear now? You're yeah. coming in clearer. Yeah. Well, why do you have to have that citizen panel? Is you put your put your name up there so I know who it is. <laughs> I figured it would grab your attention. Yeah, and also uh, move your camera so we can see your face. It's like your Kilroy was here. Yeah. There you. Go. There we go. That's that's a little nicer. Yeah. Yeah. So is this going to be it tonight? Do you figure? Sure, we could do it with just the three of us. Just the three of us? Yeah. <laughs> Tony will call. Yeah, uh, no, Tony, he may not call. You know, he's he, he's never reliable that way. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, last night was, was last night slow? It was kind of semi-slow. You know, but uh, a lot of people listening. So that's that's all that, that's all that mattered to me. Yeah. Do you think it, they were listening because of the shooting incident and they wanted to hear what we were going to say? No, I don't think so. You know, I, I how many people are really that into that story? I mean, it's one of those stories that, yeah, it happened. But for crying out loud, you know, while they were sitting there reporting on the streets for eight hours endlessly with a story that wasn't really developing, okay, in Chicago, I'm sure two or three people got killed from gunfire. And they weren't reporting that. They didn't suddenly break in with breaking news for that. They didn't send reporters out onto the street for that. And they probably weren't white either. That's yep. correct. That's correct. Yeah. yeah, so for those of you who think that we are being callous about this, Gabby Gifford had part of her skull removed. Why yeah. she was in the hospital waiting for her brain to swell and then to come back down. She had like five more surgeries. Now, the first 90 days, uh, in the first 100 days of this presidency, your great negotiator signed 90 executive orders. You want to know what he did for the rest of the time? He repealed everything Obama, uh, President Obama did towards gun control. Within the first 100 days, he literally erased all of the gun control that we worked so hard to put on the books for eight years. Well, so yeah, yeah, but here, 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 let, let, me th let, me th let me throw the argument at you that the, the Republicans will throw at you about this situation yesterday. Well, if if uh, weren't if there was gun control, there wouldn't have been people there with guns uh, who could have who, who who helped to stop the guy. You know, were there people there with yeah, guns yes. to help stop the guy? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So they used you mean other, other than police officers. Yeah, uh, uh, they were. I believe they were. They were security they were, people. They were. Yeah, they're hired. People. Yeah. So yeah. so you can't. I hired a police officer with a gun. Doesn't isn't the same as allowing a regular Joe Blow to have a gun. I want the person trained with the gun to own the gun, and that's who had the gun. Right. So you can't, that's not even a viable option, yeah. as far as they say. Yeah, it was a security guard. It wasn't a regular person, so. By the way, this is interesting. This is fascinating, folks, because I, I want you to look at the picture that we have up currently. You have 
Okay, on one side, you have uh, Renee, who is in Honolulu, or not Honolulu, she's in Hawaii. She's on the big island, right? Much better, yeah. The big island of Hawaii. And then we have, um, uh, uh, oh boy, my mind's a blank. Brian. 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 With, uh, and if you, if you move your c- camera a little bit down, we can see you're in a car driving down the road. I think he's in a truck. Are you in a truck? I'm in a cargo van. You're in a yeah, cargo van. Got, oh, he's got bounce. Okay, so it's a van. Yeah. Right. So look at that. I mean, isn't this wonderful? This is this is uh, this is technology at its very finest. Brian, how are yes. you going back to your your hub now? Because you've got 15 minutes left on your shift, or? That's correct. I'm, I'm well overdue. I'm usually I'm usually on by this time, but uh, some uh, snafus occurred that were not my fault, and uh, well, you know, I'm paid by the hour, so what the fuck. Well, you see, the new the new system that we're using here for Skype allows us to now do uh, calls from iPads and iPhones and uh, mobile phones. So you've so, decided to go with the update and acquiesce yourself to it. Though. Well, it uh, I went with it, and it works just fine. It, it, somehow, between the time when I tried it last and now, they've done some improvements and fixed it. And, they missed uh, those. Yeah. Go and, ahead. And and you know it it really is uh, it, the pictures widescreen, the fidelity of the pictures are better, uh, and uh, you know it, you know and and seeing you drive driving down the road that's so much fun uh, I love that you know so uh, I'm assuming then I believe it's safe to assume then that the uh, termination of Gabnet is. Uh, uh, it, put on oh, 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 it still could be any day, but uh, for other reasons, you know. I thought it's greatly exaggerated. Yes. Well. Hello, Patrick. How are you? Hey, hey. I'm wearing this green because Phil's not here, so this is closer to Chroma Key. That is closer to Chroma Key. It is. It is. Yeah. Although the true Chroma Key is kind of almost neon. Right. You know, and but that's close. Neon. It doesn't probably doesn't come through as neon as it is, but this is pretty fucking neon because the '90s have come back to the goddamn stores. So well, all it, of the fucking clothes that you buy now, yeah, t-shirts and that, they're all neon like they were when I was in fucking high well, school. It, and it's and certainly crazy. it's certainly greener than that snot rag that Phil has. Right, that's why I wore it because at least since he's not there to to feel bad, I can wear this and brag that. I'm oh, what we'll do is you can call again tomorrow night when he's here and we'll say that you showed up with a chroma key uh, shirt and we started putting all kinds of things on you. You know. <laughs> we even put legs on you so you could walk. Awesome. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, wouldn't he have to be wearing an entire cr- uh, green leotard kind of thing is that what they use when they're doing those sports well no that's the the, the leotard thing is when actually uh what are the, what are the the leotard is used when you just want to blank the person out completely but you want them to carry something around you know because oh, okay. if, if you were to wear nothing but green on a gre- against a green screen you, you would disappear you know that's so. what they did with uh what is his name andy uh circuit who yeah. played uh, Gollum? Yeah, he had the little um, the markers on oh, yeah, there. Little little dots, little balls. He yeah, showed where his muscle and bone structures would be, but yeah. he was all in green from head to toe. Yeah, uh, so that he wouldn't be seen in the in the scene, but the uh, animators yeah. then could uh, figure out where the dots were on him and then animate yeah. him that way to Gollum. So. Well, by the, by the way, let me just mention to people that up here, we have Brian. He is driving down the road. Where are you, Brian? I am uh, on uh, Interstate 376, it, it, headed towards uh, Pittsburgh. And uh-huh. in turn, I will be going into yeah. uh, McKee's Rocks. And, uh, and, and, and down here, of course, is Renee Collins, and she is in Hawaii. Uh, Patrick is in uh, Wisconsin. See, I got it right, Patrick. And then we have John Rockwell just down the street from me. Yeah, all cross cross town. Cross town. <laughs> down, well, down the uh, comparatively down the street from these people. Oh God, that's true. Definitely, yeah. very close. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
And if a few more people will call, I can then, uh, right now I'm kind of blocking a little bit of your face with my picture, but it, as soon as somebody else calls, the picture gets smaller and then everything uh, gets so it into, comes together. It, it comes together, yeah, yeah. So uh, what, what I want, I, what I, what I was going to say to Pat. That looks good, it looks yeah. good. I was going to say to Pat. Does 10 that, people still constitute a full house or has this update changed? Uh, I ha you know something, I, I'm not going to push it. No, no. I'm not going to push it. Uh, you know, even even if I could put 20, you know, audio wise, we can put up to 25 people on at a time. But that would be such a clusterfuck. I couldn't deal with it. You know, uh, remind us to do it for your birthday. But if we could, I'm going to look and see if you can go over the, the 10 people. It's nine, actually, plus me. Uh, if if we could do that. Yeah, but I don't know that I would want to. It's just too many people to have to deal with at one time, you know, and be a traffic cop for all of that, you know. So. That would be a Republican congressman's town meeting. <laughs> We'd yeah. all be yelling at each exactly. other. And, you know, so, and uh, at you. Oh, Phil or on especially. What was your take, Patrick, about the shooting yesterday? I mean, I've, I've tended to say that... Uh, uh, you know, they made such a big deal out of it. They did nonstop programming, and yet when you when you look at the reality of it, I mean, how many people maybe at the same time got shot in Chicago, and and were killed? I I, I heard you say that, and I laughed because Chicago got, if not the most stringent, some of the most stringent gun control laws, mm -hmm. and yet they're 100 percent right that they're still killing each other. So you can put as much gun control as you want out there. Yeah. The, the people that are, that are hell-bent on killing mm -hmm. are going to kill. And that's just the reality of it. And we've seen that, whether it be with knives or using a uh, cargo van or whatever it is, um, if they're bent on killing, they're going to do it. It just so happened that this guy had the weapons. And I think... The biggest deal for this particular one was the fact that he sought out a particular party and um, it, not necessarily an assassination on an individual, but he just kept spraying because he knew Republicans were there, um, which is different than Gabby Gifford because that idiot went after her specifically. Yeah. So that was an assassination. This was like an ambush of, I'm going to kill as many Republicans as possible because I don't like Donald Trump, I don't like Republicans. Guess what? Too fucking bad. Okay, so eight people died, uh, if I remember correctly, and I don't know if I, I have to go look this up, but I think eight people died with Gabby Gifford. Yeah, so, there were, there so were, it, it's a you. mowing down, whether it's a mowing down of a particular assassination temp of a person, eight people lost their lives. With this particular shooting, uh, the only person that died was the shooter, and only a couple of people even ended up in the hospital, right? right. Yeah, they're pretty bad shape, but it's not, it wasn't as, as widespread uh, death as in some of the other shootings we've seen, like in Orlando and a couple of other places. Yeah, I, don't think he, I think he just sprayed, I don't think he was very accurate, he was just I've got this, you know, this big automatic weapon and bam, bam, just, you know, shoot everybody. A lot of people were hitting the ankle and hitting the, you know, if they got hit at all, they were they were wounded because uh, he wasn't aiming and going boom, boom, boom. He was just, you're Republican, <laughs> you're Republican, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in some ways that's probably saved a lot of people. Plus, the police were there. There, there were police there, you know, the two of the. Two of them are, you know, in the hospital and be coming out soon. They're really, uh, you know, they were on. They were quick when it when it happened. But, you know, the nut, nuts, nuts are nuts. With but, you know, also at the same it. time, though, what becomes kind of idiotic are the people who suddenly make a big deal out of the fact that this guy was a Bernie Sanders supporter. You know, yeah. like it's Bernie's fault. Six mm -hmm. people died with Gabby. Oh, Gifford. oh with Gabby. Six. Yeah. Yeah, six people died. So I, I was wrong. Yeah, I, I forgot that there was more than just Giffords. I mean, she's actually, she no. came, she's lucky she came out alive. Well, know? I also was, as I was reading through this, because all of the Republicans were all in a hissy fit, I think that because she was married to 
Scott, right? He's yeah, the, the astronaut. The astronaut. That she got a whole lot of uh, rehabilitation and or technology, medical technology, because she was flown from where she was to Houston. And and I was wondering if NASA didn't play any part in her recovery. But I don't Good know. hospitals in Houston, I know that. Well, I mean, uh, you know, NASA, I don't know that NASA necessarily had anything to do with her recovery. Uh, they're not in the in the in that kind of medical business, but they might have used, and I don't think they needed to use their push and power because she was she was a congressman, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, that, she was going to get preferential treatment anyway. I mean, God forbid you or I should get shot down by somebody. We're not going to get the same, you know, immediate uh, uh, treatment. Uh, yeah, that bothers me. The fact that when they're all talking about the Republican thing and, and I don't, I can't believe nobody says this, but if that were you or me, we wouldn't be getting this kind of, we might not be getting this kind of emergency assistance. We might not have the health care that, that we need in order to have a full recovery like Gabby Gifford. So I guess the way to look at this is that he's damn lucky who he is because the fact that he's got health care and I don't know how many, 24 million people. Well, let's, 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 be, let's, be, let's be honest. If it were just anybody and he got shot, uh, they would not just let him lie there until he got better. You know, I mean, they, somebody would do something about it, but it wouldn't have, it, would, they wouldn't, it wouldn't have the same intensity that it does because he's a congressman. You know, so it, by that, just by benefit of that, he's he's privileged, you know, yes. and I don't see that, you know, I have to be honest about this, that his life is any more important than mine or mine is any more important than his and that he gets he does get he does get to suck off the tit. Uh, yes, Patrick. In uh, Milwaukee, just for, uh, five, six, seven years ago, um, the mayor uh, had his hand broken by a, I believe it was a tire iron. He uh, went and he was defending a woman who was getting sexually assaulted at a, at a local festival. And the mayor stepped in and he he did his part, but he ended up getting his hand broken. And there was as much local coverage on that as what you saw nationally for the uh, the guy that got shot yesterday, or Gabby Gifford, and it it just it's amazing because the thing is nothing changed for hours. Well, I mean, the, no, but the, the, that's was, that's what I've been complaining about, about Patrick about the news uh, is that they take a story like this in which there is only one fact we know: a congressman got shot by somebody while practicing baseball. Now that's the story. That remains the story for two, three hours. But they don't leave the air. They keep repeating it over and over. And then it changes slightly. Oh, he's out of the operating room and he's in recovery. But boom. It, just why don't you go off the air and come back when you got something new to tell me? Yes, Patrick. They're now wiping his ass. And <laughs> what? Yeah, they're, and, they, and they, I'm sorry to interrupt, Patrick, but I... The uh, news coverage then breaks. Oh, we have live footage of uh, the doctors wiping his ass now, and there appears to be some bullet fragments and uh, and and blood stains in his fecal matter. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, but would you would you agree with me, Patrick, uh, on yeah. that? That it just they just go on forever with this. Well, it was last night. Let's say, you know, let's say eight hours later. Yeah. Where they released a cell phone video of someone who had videotaped his shooting happening from behind a, a fence. To me, that was new news, and that was worthy of coverage because then you could see what had happened. But you're right. For yeah, the but them, the them, 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 what do they do for the next five hours after that? They keep <laughs> rerunning the one. same footage yeah. over I, I and over. I was thinking of you, Alex. I was thinking of you because they did it in portrait mode. And I was thinking, Alex, <laughs> having a He'd be yelling at the person, turn the fucking thing sideways. Turn it sideways. <laughs> well, I mean, I have a point, don't I? I mean, would you, do you want to, if we, if we were doing this now and we had people, you know, cell phones, would you want to see it in, por everybody in portrait mode? No. 
No, wouldn't look good. Mm. You know. Then you'll see I don't have pants on. Oh, no, no, that's not true. No, well, I don't know what it is with you, John, but you don't have wide. You're not wide for some reason. Oh, I'm not. Okay. No, well, I I'm, think uh, it may be your, as, maybe your can- I, Yeah, I'm a little less wide a screen as, than it, the other ones, yeah. but in, uh, on my thing. It depends. It depends on what why. kind of camera you're using. You know, some yeah, I think it's just the it's just this this old Mac or something. All the Logitechs now are automatically oh. wide. You know. Oh, oh, okay, no. And uh, but, yeah, my, I do have a point on the on the same in the same vein as you were talking about yeah. last week's London Bridge, uh, run running over and 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 beating you know the the guys that were on the London Bridge and did all that. When that first happened, it was you know early evening on a Saturday or mid evening, late evening on a Saturday, something like that. So we were seeing it here six, six hours earlier, like, you know, right about prime, what used to be called prime time, you know, four or five, six, seven o'clock, something like that. And for, I, I watched it off and off a while. Cause I had a friend that was in London that week. I think, Oh geez, I hope he wasn't there. But mostly what they showed was a picture of the street with nobody on it. Maybe a few cops walking around. There was a, there was something we thought might be the the van. I think it wasn't even the van. I mean, for hours there was there was nothing. They they had nothing to show. It was whatever BBC or ITV or whatever. That was it. But they didn't go off it because they didn't know. Well, you know what you it know, is. Thinking, it, why would why I'll, couldn't I'll, they just I'll, I'll tell come you, back when there was I'll, some new news? I'll tell you why they do it in the United States. Oh, uh, it, it, news. It, <laughs> it, no, it's it's all because money. Exactly, Brian. You you hit the nail on the head. What it is is they uh, they don't they don't want to sign off because they don't want to be the one who signs off first, mm-hmm. and so they're all sitting there playing gotcha, you know, like I, well, I'm not going off first. Well, I'm not going if and then if one of them goes off, they'll all go off, you know. But the they they're waiting you, the, they're, yeah. they're waiting for somebody else to make the move. Otherwise, the over yeah. overused uh, words in in. In, uh, on all these channels are breaking news. Yeah, Everything no. is not breaking news, but it's always breaking news is down at the bottom on everything. It, it's never, you know, it, they never, at CNN, Trump, I think Trump it's permanently etched, <laughs> it's permanently burned into the image. Yeah. I thought and every local, time he talked, local it was mouthy farts. Uh, oh, it was what? I said, I thought every day he said Trump farted at breaking news. Oh. I thought that's a sound he makes every time he tries to talk. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, is there anybody out there who, uh, anybody else want to call? If you look down at the bottom of your screen on uh, Facebook or uh, Facebook Live, you've got the GabNet Live uh, uh, address, and you've got the phone number you can call if you want to oh, use yeah. a te- telephone, you know. The guy, did you see the hero over in the, so the knife thing that you were talking about, the incident you were talking about, did you see the older gentleman that, that uh, um, came up to one of the guys wielding knives and said, not in my fucking country, and went bam, bam, bam. And just oh, the, the Brits, the Brits were not, yeah, they, they fought back, man, <laughs> the Londoners, they were, well, they were throwing bottles at those guys, they were, you know, everything they could do, they were, they weren't having it. Well, they've had to deal with this for similar sorts of things for decades with the IRA, with all these other things. They've been dealing with terror, you know, much longer than yeah. anybody in America has right. ever been dealt with. Yeah. And so often, so you know, they're Wait. like, enough of this crap. Wait a minute, Jack Bishop is trying to call in, but I, he, 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 has a, he had a problem last night, yeah. too. Uh-oh. Hold on a second. Let me, just, let me just add him to the group, see if yeah. this works. See if he picks up and and here he, here's us ringing him, uh, okay. because for some reason I don't know what it is, but every time he tries to call, he I can't I can't put him on, and then when I call him back, he doesn't answer. So maybe it's a older version of Skype or something. Yeah. It could be he's using an older version yeah. of Skype. Yeah, that's, I updated mine and it's just you know it, it took no time at all. But I only got Skype a couple of months ago. So. Well, I had to for months fight changing it because every time I would warm it up or start it up, it goes. Do you want to go to the new one? And you had to press not now, <laughs> not now, not now, not now. Yeah. Only if you yeah. just. Do you want to go to the new one? Only if you decide to lick shit and eat yeah. my asshole. Yeah. <laughs> well, the call failed. I was, so we, I was just thinking about Brian the other day when we were watching all of those people sit around the table kissing uh, Trump's Oh, dick. yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
the first thought in my head was, damn, I wish I knew what Brian was thinking right at this particular point yes. in time. <laughs> wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I want to find out. Jack, what, what, what's your problem getting in? Because I had to call you back. Well, uh, I uh, called you. Yeah. And didn't hear a ring back from you because I understand you're using the new system. No, no, but I don't call back. I don't have to call back. The new system you, works just like the old system. Okay. Well, I had to click on a icon that's that said uh, camera. Did you even hear you? Uh, it w really? Well, anyway, I called. Uh, I called you back. So you know. But but the fact is that you with if if you update to the newest Skype. Mm -hmm. You can just answer calls just like you always have. It comes up just like it should, you know. Well, we're well, we're doing that over the weekend when somebody's here that understands this crap. Well, all you have to do is go to Skype and just say update, and it just sits there and does it for you. Oh, by, by the way, if you've got a PC, if you have a twelve-year-old 12, 12 relative, they'll be able to do it like that. If you if you've got, by, by the way, I have a suggestion for everybody. If you've got a PC. Okay, and you're upgrading Skype. It's going to ask you, do you want the Windows 10 version? You say, no, you want Skype Classic. Uh -huh. Okay, because the Windows 10 version is a browser style version as opposed to, I mean, it could work for you, but it wouldn't work for me. I wouldn't be able to get the video out there like we get it out. Yeah. You know. Okay, I'm signing out now. I'll. Catch you. Uh, okay, so you're going home now. Okay, so let's say you have reached your destination. Let's say goodbye. I'm, to Bar I'm punching out, and then I'm getting. I'm yeah. Okay. We'll see you in a bit, Brian. So Brian is still alive, and living in Pennsylvania. Let me turn something down. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. So Jack, this was one of the easiest Skype updates I've ever seen. So yeah. Oh, good. Good. Be lucky yeah. It, it has to Very be quick. real easy for me because I frankly believe in tin cans and a string, but that's just me. But I heard Patrick say good. something yeah. about Chicago and guns. The problem is not Chicago's gun control laws, right? but the fact that you go outside of Chicago and mm -hmm. it's so damn easy to get guns, it's scary. Yeah. Do you mean outside of downtown? No, outside of the city limits of Chicago. Okay. Uh, uh, and also, particularly, if you go into Wisconsin, you know, I, as I understand, as soon as you cross the border into Wisconsin, there are two, there are two gun stores going, outside, going out of Chicago. And how much of an effort is it to drive to Chicago to, from, from Chicago to Wisconsin? Half two an hours. hour. Half an hour. That. Well, see what well, I just what I, what, what makes no miles. sense to me whatsoever. And uh, I know Patrick, you're you're not you're you're not for gun control, but it's basically because you're practical about it and you feel it's not it it's not going to serve its purpose. But, yeah, my, but am I right? Have I got that right, Patrick? Uh, pretty well. I mean, background checks are great. Um, we have them. Um, I don't know how much more you want. I don't want somebody up my ass. Um, right. If I want to buy a gun, I, I mean, I'm qualified. I'm, I'm legal. I don't have a fucking record. Uh, I don't need you checking out my tax record. I don't need you up my ass in my house. Can, yeah. I, can I can I ask Patrick a question? Well, wait a minute. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Ask him a question. Yeah. Patrick, have you ever had a family member killed by gun violence? Yes. Okay. So have I. So and, uh, so, what is this the uh, the, uh, the Mexican standoff now? What is this? No, no, I'm just, I'm just saying that why why would any person uh, need a handgun? Because that's the question. If you're walking down the street with a shotgun or a long rifle, everybody knows that you're armed and dangerous, right? Well, I, right. You, you know. It, it's just, in Wisconsin, we have open and concealed kits. So, I'm not talking about open and concealed. No, I, I understand, but, if you, but you're saying if you carry a rifle, they know you're armed and dangerous. Well, in Wisconsin, you can carry a pistol outside, and you're armed and dangerous just as well. Yeah, so people, we, we've got the same law in Texas. You know, and I think, first of all, you don't need a handgun to protect yourself. I've always said if you want to protect your home, you get yourself 
a 12 gauge shotgun you can blow any son of a bitch away that you want to blow away right not in enclosed quarters no I well, mean, well, that's the nice thing with, with right, getting... So, some, right, yeah. so, you, so you skip the 12, and you go to the 16. No, no. In, I mean, it, it, as far as length, the 12 and 16 and, and 10 gauge are all around the same length. If you get a pistol or, like I would prefer, like an AR-15 with a collapsible stock, then you do have a rifle, but it, it's a shorter version. So you want to just see brass fly. What that? You want to see brass fly? <laughs> Not necessarily. I, <laughs> I either do or you don't with an AR-15 or an AR-16 or my personal choice, the Mini-14. Wait a minute. Let me. Let me. Can I uh, jump in here? Militia. And, and, <laughs> yeah. Well, let me. Let me t- uh, t- t- add to a little fuel to this fire. We're always talking about a handgun versus. Uh, an AR-15, for instance, or whatever the gun is. And my a- answer is, aren't both these just terribly lethal items that can do the same thing in the end? You know? Ultimately. Uh, yeah. and, and what do you like about... what? what you don't like the rifle because it's an assault rifle, but at <laughs> least you can't hold it in your pocket. You know? You, s- you don't get an argument from me. I don't think any civilian <laughs> needs to own... Any gun. I haven't had a gun well, since I, I had I don't, I don't, I don't disagree with you, but I think Patrick might disagree with you. And, and the reason I, I Patrick's trained. And, and I'll tell you the reason I like Patrick, and I've always had a great respect for Patrick, is he is is a conservative. Howdy. He has the other view, uh, completely opposed to mine, and yet I listen to him because what he says has a certain rationale to it. It's not. You know, a gun toting. I want my Second Amendment, and I don't care. You know, Pat, Patrick is not some knee-jerk pistol packer. That's correct. And, and here's an actual thing: I've got friends of mine that do carry, and they've encouraged me to carry. I don't own a weapon anymore. I got rid of my weapon as soon as I got my wheelchair. Um, I used to deer hunt, and deer hunting is. I mean, they have deer hunt for people in wheelchairs. And to me, that's not hunting. That's like shooting fish in a barrel because they, you're on a, on a stand and they drive the deer towards you. Yeah, that's, that's not, It's not fun to me. And I, I sold my rifle and that was the end of it. And I got rid of my pistol. Now, the thing is, there's one reason I will not have a weapon, well, a couple of reasons why I won't have a weapon in my house. One, if I'm in my bed, Unless the weapon is next to me, I can't get to it easily. Number two, I won't carry a weapon on me because I transfer from my wheelchair to my car. Mm. And when I transfer, there's a possibility that that weapon, even if it's empty and all that, uh, I can hurt myself or it can drop. It, you know, I mean, there's all sorts of dangers with it that are just logical for me personally Mm -hmm. to have it. However, I don't discourage anyone else from having it. So, Well, let me ask you this, Patrick. Why is it that so many other countries, people don't seem to need it? You know, the reason I don't own a gun is because two times in my life, if I had owned one, I would have used it. And it scared the hell out of me when I realized... I said to myself, Bish, while you don't get mad often, when you do get mad, you got about a five-minute temper, and some son of a bitch twice could have been dead. And you could have been so you're, either you're, you're, doing so life in prison. Part, part of or, your fear of guns is yourself. Yeah, because I know who I am. Yes, I have sir. new statistics. The number of deaths in the United States from gun violence this year is 6,886. The number of injuries this year is 13,509. Here, here's the one no one can Is that talk so to far this about. year? Yeah. Okay. The number of children from 0 to 11, but, okay, but this is killed or injured, 300. The number of teens killed or injured, 1,442. 
The number of people shot in a massacre this year is 154. Officers involved shooting or killed 132. Officers, officers involved in incidents subject to suspect shot or killed 957. And the last one is home invasions, 1,133. Well, uh, you're, at least you're making a case a for the people who want to have guns because of home invasions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, but look at the numbers. I mean, it's just like well, the numbers are staggering, and, and if you if you compare them to the, the numbers in other countries, oh, they're well, staggering. They're not even yeah. Uh, so, and in fact, the, in fact, you say why don't they uh, have the same uh, attitude about guns in other countries? And the thing is that for some reason, uh, there aren't as many gun deaths, you know. Uh, and in Canada, right? Canada is a prime example of that. Okay. Uh, they they carry every freaking thing they want to kind of uh, carry, it, well, but per they don't have as many deaths per as capita. We do. Per capita, I think they have One of the strange things about Canada is, uh, and I always get the statistics on this confused, uh, proportionally, they actually have more weapons per person than we do. Right. They, but what they do have is less death. And I heard an interesting discussion about this today. Yeah. They have a social safety net system with good mental health treatment for people. See, and you know what? Why aren't we having that conversation? Seriously. Because we know that the Miami shooting was somebody who was mentally unstable, that the Sandy Hook thing that, that some Republicans don't believe it is a big deal was a mentally unstable person. This guy had to be, um, I'm guessing, had to mentally be unstable. How come we aren't having the mental health conversation? Because it's not sexy. Gun is a sexy thing to most alpha male Americans. Well, you see, the thing is also guns are etched into our Constitution. There's no other country in the world where their Constitution, it's, it's kind of etched into their into their the codification of their laws uh and uh consequently we they hold this is like if, if you if you get rid of the second amendment man you're killing the constitution and that's such bullshit it's such bu absolute bullshit hello jeff stein hello yay How are you? there we go good I made it. if you were okay there buddy yeah, we've been working about you, Jeff. Smartest guy in the room just came in. It turns out, it turns out Jeff was away. He was out traveling. He was out uh, okay. uh, 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 scurrying was, about. Uh, huh? Fortunately, on the airport for 12 hours today. Oh, oh boy. How did that happen? From Atlanta. <laughs> that, that doesn't make much sense. That's but. a hub, isn't it? It's the busiest uh, yeah. hub in the, in the country. Is it really? Went, yeah, that's a big place. Excuse but, me, folks. Uh, my nose is dripping. Uh, I think in New York was where the problem was uh, yeah. with the uh, a lot of the flights were were coming in late, late, late. Wow. Yeah. Well, so we're we're talking we're talking guns again. Oh, oh bang! <laughs> Kapow! <laughs> bang bang! Yeah. I was thinking about uh, getting the president a uh, a new hat, mm -hmm. a uh, baseball club mm -hmm. and uh, i think he ought to join that uh, republican team see what happens next week <laughs> that's good i like that. yeah, but he's not a congressman you know <laughs> he's in the wrong branch he's in the wrong he's in the executive branch i don't think they have a baseball team what i find so funny is we've had 154 uh mass shootings so far this year yeah. It took shooting one congressman in the ass to get Congress to start talking about guns. Yeah. Well, we yeah. have done it earlier then. Uh, hey. And now we're being joined so by Brian is now driving home. He's in his car driving home. As you can see the lights. <laughs> That's correct. Lights going in the background there. Isn't this wonderful? Shades of taxi driver, I think, as we as a, as all those. <laughs> if you're driving down uh through Times Square, that would be perfect. <laughs> well, you know, I, uh, I Brian reminds me somewhat of Travis Bickle, you know, but that's... <laughs> yes, uh, Tony raised his hand. Yeah, I have to excuse me, so my mother, it's, uh, I got to go upstairs, I'm going to have to cut her short because she wants to ask me something. Okay. 
Oh. I have somebody in the hospital, a family member. She's going to give me what's up. What's going uh, how, on. How's your family member doing in the hospital? She's in ICU. She had bypass surgery, so yeah. my cousin must have just called. So they're watching her. Something with her kidneys. I think she's struggling with the kidneys. But I want to see what's going on. Yeah. Okay. My well, little, well, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll call you tomorrow. Alex. Our our Good best luck. thoughts are with you. Good Thank luck. You. I'm in the will if it helps any. But uh, oh well, if I'm you're in the, if you're in the will, then f fuck it. Just give me some of it. No, I knew you were going to say that. I'm only joking. No, she'll be. I think she'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But there's right. part of you that goes, you get money if she dies. Okay. So there's a bet on here. Oh well. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, little dad. That Death pool. Gabbed at death pool. Yeah, I'm not going to start in with Tony on that because uh, do you remember Renee? What happened the last time Tony had somebody who was di who died? And I, 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 kind of as a joke, Patrick remembers. Is what did I say? I well, I never liked her anyway. I You're think. Right. And he started crying on the air, and I went, oh, my God. You know, the one thing you don't want to do as a broadcaster is make your caller cry. You're such a warm, thoughtful guy, Bennett. Bucky, I'm trying to see how many people I can alienate before I die. There you That's go. what I want to see. Uh, I think you'll have a better chance of being alienated from me, just as I think uh, Phil will have a better chance of coming to you and saying I can't talk on this program when Brian Ludwig is on here than the other way around. Well, you're you're okay, Brian. You know, nobody. Uh, I we all we all love you because you're you know you're our Travis Bickle, as I said. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Brian is the anti Phil. Yeah. The anti Phil. So I'm, I'm, in case people <clears throat> s notice, I was sneezing there a little bit. I, 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 I hope oh. I'm not getting my sinus condition back again, but I've had a headache all day. But it's supposed to rain tomorrow, so, you know. Um, Are you getting over your uh, flu or whatever it was you had? Oh yeah, well I went to the I went to a doctor and they gave me medicine and the medicine ran out yesterday and I'm and now I'm paranoid it's going to come back, you know, so. Did you take the full cycle? Yeah, I went the full cycle. Like yeah, to? yep, absolutely, absolutely. Mm. I was feeling phenomenal, and today I was just feeling a little rough throat, and you know, and and sinus headache. But I don't feel sick like I was last week. I mean, do I sound not peppy? You sound fine. I sound you peppy. Sound, I'm peppy you, and snappy. You, you sound as peppy as you sounded when I met you when you were seventeen. Pe peppy. Ah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. Um, uh, you know, we, 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 we can get away from the whole gun thing because <clears throat> the only thing that gets to me is what is it going to take? What incident is it going to take for these people to do something about it? And I don't think there is an incident. And I'm going to tell you why. If they didn't, when what, 20 grade school kids got killed at Sandy Hook and they didn't do anything about it, you think they're going to do it for anybody else? I mean, what? You know, the congressman gets shot? That's not going to do it. And then, then they're all saying, oh, by the way, you know, this, this uh, thing is bringing us closer together. Well, if that's what it takes to bring us closer together in this country, kiss your ass goodbye because we can't get anything done. Yes, Patrick. What I found hilarious were some of the Facebook uh, posts and then on some of the news shows, um, where some of the uh, folks that join the Democrat side of the aisle were asking, will this now change Republican minds on gun control? And I had to laugh because I was thinking, it didn't change my mind, and it sure as hell isn't going to change anyone else's mind. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a person that got shot. It was an unfortunate incident, and it didn't do a damn thing, for my opinion, other than... I hope the the guy lives so that they can figure out what the hell you know why he did it. Oh no bro. no he he's dead. He's dead. He died though yeah. He died. Oh the so, congressman. Congressman's critical still right? Uh, yeah. Oh yes. Are you talking about the gunman? Yeah he died. Yeah. I was gonna. I was I was almost getting hopeful there for a second. I, I think mean, he's, so I think he's critical, but they, I, think I make no fucking apologies. You know, fuck fuck him. And you know what? If anything changes, you know, Patrick was mentioning, uh, are things going to change with Republicans? Well, if anything changes with me, it's that I'm going to, if, if this guy, if this cocksucker just, it lives, I'm going to blame the gunman for not having been a better shot. Oh, jeez. Well, okay, I'm going to get a call tomorrow from Homeland Security. 
Uh, yeah. your, your name, your last name. Don't go fuck themselves and chase real criminals. <laughs> I'm just a cocksucker with an opinion. You know something? <laughs> you are a cocksucker with an opinion. That's true. <clears throat> number that's one, exactly n- n- number saying. one, you're you're gay. So you know, I mean, come on. But are you more, saying he's the kind of cocksucker that gives cocksuckers a bad name? Yeah. No. But uh, what I'm saying is, is that no, he has a right to feel that way. You know, it's funny. They will go after a thought like Brian just had. And, and let's check this guy out. Let's make sure he's okay. And yet you got a guy like uh, Alex Jones mm. yeah, who makes outrageous statements that are worse than that. And he can get away with it because he's a broadcaster. Mm. Bullshit. Mm. You know? Plus there's family members of his that are affected by his or what I, mm. fuckery. If, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, are those those people that are half human, half frog? Oh yeah, he's the guy that says that. Yeah, yeah half human, half frog. He's also the guy who talked about Hillary Clinton uh, running a prostitution ring out of a pizza parlor in Philadelphia, yeah, which compelled that guy to, yeah, you know, oh shoot that, that up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and what did what did the Democrats do with that? They said, "Oh yeah, you know what? This is terrible. We're not gonna we're not gonna spend a lot of time on it. We do want to talk a little bit about mental health, but we're not really gonna blast this out someone's ass." Yeah. Guess how that worked out for us. <laughs> but Alex was right the other night when he said, "There's always been somebody like an Alex Jones, or a." Uh, 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 Joe Pine, if you want to go back, well, yeah, you know Pine far. was different though. Pine, Pine, Pine was uh, uh, he was Before. doing he was doing an act. He knew it. He didn't fool anybody about it. Uh, Pine was okay. You what know? about Morton Downey? Morton Downey, I knew Mort, and um, Mort Morty was a kind of nice guy actually. Uh, but but he 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 found. He found a way to make a living, okay? Uh, and uh, he had tried many things because his father was a famous uh, Irish tenor, and uh, he was having to live up to that, and so he was trying all kinds of things. And finally, he got this TV show, and he learned that if you were a little in your face with the TV show, uh, you'd be popular. And he was. He was amazingly successful for a rather short amount of time. And he was but but he didn't he didn't believe what he was doing. I mean, he looked at me and said, you know, it's all an act. I'm having fun. You know, I'm having grins. And quite frankly, any TV show where uh, um, Al Sharpton gets decked by Roy Innes is my cup of tea. No, no, no. My issue is... I'm on Jerry Springer, right? <laughs> Everybody gets decked on Jerry Springer. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I was talking the other night, uh, John, about... My wife made me quit watching Springer because she said, I wouldn't have somebody that watches that kind of crap. And, and I had to explain to her, it's an act. What I was watching it was for the girl well, fights. Jerry, who I got to know, who I've gotten to know over the years, constantly has said to me, he says, it's just a TV fucking show. It's just a TV show, you know? He said, "It's it's not. We're not going to solve any world problems with this thing, you know." And and Springer's a very intelligent guy, by the way. Very 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 left wing, you know. Remember, he was the mayor of Cleveland. Oh you yeah. Know. So he, he has some degrees behind him. He's, oh, he he's knows. Got his, some, no, he yeah. he knows his stuff, you know. Yeah. And I and I and I liked him a lot. I mean. Yeah, but the you know the, these guys are all they all got their little uh, mom and pop stand. You know they got their little uh, selling their jams and jellies, and, and uh, but but in the case of Alex Jones, it's a different story. This guy is exacerbating a situation for his own uh, benefit. Okay, in other words, the stance he's taking is for his own benefit, and he's creating a great amount of grief for other people while doing it there's no emoluments clause in the well, cc well no what happens is is that you know i've often said this you've heard me say this that i felt that my major response and i'm sure jack will agree with me on this that your job as a broadcaster is to protect the public first of all never do anything that will put them in harm's way 
And so anything that you do that might put them in harm's way is, you know, questionable. You, you just shouldn't do it. When you were a disc jockey, you never did one of those treasure hunt things that we were all guilty of back in the early 60s? No. Oh, well, you're a better man than I am. You know. <laughs> Um, Wait a second. You did a few remotes or that. Who was that? Got Curtis, right? Oh, we did. We did stunts, little fun yeah. stunts and things like that. But we didn't yeah, do Curtis any. Was... We didn't do anything that would harm the public. In other That's words, true. he didn't do something that, you know, other guys would like. Uh, one guy stopped traffic on the on the Bay Bridge at at, uh, at uh, rush hour. Uh, we, mm -hmm. I would have never allowed that to happen. Yeah. Because that. It, it, you know, is against the public welfare. You know, you don't want to hurt people. The yeah. governor of New Jersey used to do that. Well, the governor of New Jersey <laughs> does it just to win elections, yeah. <clears throat> Did you, I just saw Patrick's name come up on Skype. Did you just turn on Skype again or something, Patrick? Or why? It stopped on me. You guys all paused, and then it came back. Oh, because uh, we didn't notice you go away at all. You know. Well, that was, that was good. That's why I didn't do anything. I thought, well, we'll see what happens with this new version. Well, anyway, pray for me because I've got this headache, and I think it's a sinus headache, and I hope I'm not getting sick again. You know. I was just sure. wondering if the humidity is peaking over there, which is which is going to bother your head. Well, that's probably has something to do with it a bit. Have you got AC on? Yeah, this oh, AC yeah. sucks though. It really sucks. I've got. I think I've got to buy a new air conditioner. Well, I'm waiting for Scott to show up to see how painful his information is going to be. Yeah, we were talking with Scott the other night about his AC system. Yeah. And, you know, and, and here, Alex, as you know, it's hot. To, you know, not to have AC is putting your life in danger. We've had people actually die in this part well, of the country. Well, wait a minute, but people did live in that part of the country and not die when they didn't have air conditioning. Well, yeah, it's a hell of a lot worse than when you lived here, a hell of a lot worse uh, than when I moved here. Uh, in 1980, we had close to 100 days of 100 degree or better weather. I knew I had lived here too you long. Use the term or, you use the term or better. I, that doesn't sound like or better to me. <laughs> no shit. Yeah. I can remember Irony. I was working nights at a station and I got home about 1 a.m. and I was living in the, uh, close to the downtown area yeah. where there is a uh, weather ball on a building yeah. and at 1.05 in the morning it was 101 degrees and the humidity was unbelievable. Wow. Oh man, that's when you just... I, just... I, I, I knew I'd lived here way too long yesterday or the day before when I was out running around in my uh, uh, little Saab convertible, uh, which has dismal air conditioning, and I said to myself, 96 degrees, this isn't that bad. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. what can I tell you? Well, I remember, another, I remember when I lived another when, Saab story. When I lived in Houston, Texas, it was the first time I ever had a car with air conditioning because you mm -hmm. couldn't have a car without air conditioning, you know? Mm -hmm. And in those days, it was those mounted things in the car, right? Yeah, that was that Mustang you had. Yeah, the Mustang. Uh, but what I remember most about Houston, I used to say it was the only town I ever lived in where I couldn't keep a crease in my pants because of the humidity. Uh, I am a profuse sweater. And I oh, used yeah. to, I used to uh, uh, leave the radio station and just walk to the parking lot and say, I need a shower. It was just terrible. But uh, uh, Scott is facing and uh, replacing an air conditioning system. And I just replaced mine, was it, yeah, earlier this year. $13,000. Um, baby. Ooh. Wow. It's, it's, it, can you write that off as mental health or <laughs> health deduction or something? Because you guys are freaking high. I mean, you're well, I'm, well, I'm actually going to try to write it off as a, uh, as uh, something for a medical condition because uh, as someone who had a quad bypass a few years ago, I get hot and I get kind of not well, real quick. Yeah. Well, Jeff, are there lots of things that you write off 
because you've got a heart condition that would make you normally uncomfortable and not a good point to have? Hmm. Asking no. Jeff me. Yeah, I was asking Jeff. No. <laughs> he's the one with the he's the one with the pig and the cow and he's he's, he's the one with animal parts. Yeah, he's the one yeah, with I've got everything. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting some more stuff today. What you getting, brother? I'm gonna get a new watch arm. A watch. A new man. a watch man, but is that gonna be a cool? watch man. Internally. A watch, oh, a watch man. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It, it, Explain it to us. I love this technology because okay. you're getting to be you're kind of like the, the bionic man. <clears throat> Here's the idea. Inside your heart, there's a little place. It's like a little socket. And you can get clots that form in that. And if you have too many clots, you have a stroke. Mm. You have too many strokes, you die. So, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. so, yeah, so there's kind of, I'm going to go there tomorrow and take, find out if this really makes sense. Is they're kind of suggesting that I have this watch man put in there. What do you mean Was watch it man? Open what, or, what do you mean watch man? No, what it is, it's a little um, a little filter mm -hmm. and like a little mm -hmm. uh, spring that would open up like that. Mm -hmm. And then once it's inside, the natural body closes it up by creating new tissue. I knew a guy and, who had but, a but wait defibrillator. Minute, but wait a minute, what does, this, what does this watch thing do, though? Well, it, once it's in there, it's passive. Well, but what is it supposed to do, though? What is its what is it, is its purpose? It, it it closes that little socket ah. that that absorbs clots. So the clots have to go past it. Now I have a headache. What the <laughs> hell are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry, I might talk about that all. I, can, can, I gotta go look it up. Can you tell? <clears throat> can you tell time with it? Um, yeah. You'll there's, know when your time is two up. two times. You're on or off. Well, well, the thing I found fascinating is a couple of weeks ago you were talking about the fact that you have a pacemaker that, that is hooked into the phone that calls the hospital and tells tells them how you are. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's quite common technology now. Like I said, I got a buddy who's got a pacemaker and a defibrillator yeah. that, that work in conjunction with each other. Uh, I'm thinking about having something done, Alex, because, you know, I'm getting to be a man of a certain age. Yeah. Uh, when I found out that Medicare would pay for a penal implant ah. inflate. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, well me yes. Medicare will pay for a penal implant? Inflator. Inflator. Yeah. You, you, really, know, you really want an inflator on your dick. It's in your dick. Mm. Even in your dick. Well, we'll put it this way. if it, uh, One of my brother-in-laws uh, who had prostate cancer, yeah, uh, uh, he has one, and he, and he says, and I quote, every guy past 65 ought to just go ahead and do this as a matter of course. Only if it's cash only. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I take Cialis, but I take it for my prostate, and uh, that uh, pretty well does the job for me. See, I, well, you see, I can't uh, take Cialis or Levitra or any of those things because of my heart condition. I had a, I had a maid named Levitra once. She was... It's a left ventricle. I'll say that again. I had a maid named Levitra once. Oh! <laughs> There you got you got the Jack Bishop intersection bell for that one. Yeah, I, I'm reading what he what Jeff said about his heart. Mm -hmm. So, is there a way that you're going to be able to monitor this stuff yourself, or does it automatic, or is this another thing that goes directly to the your doctor's office? Well, on the on the little watch thing, uh, yeah, it's pre it's pretty passive once once it's. Uh, once it's in your body, and then I think it takes like a, a month or two months until it's totally healed. And at that point, it shouldn't do anything. Put in this way, Renee, there's less to do with what Jeff is talking about doing 
than if I were to get an insulin pump for my diabetes. Mm -hmm. Aren't we past the pump? Or are we haven't we gone to something I better? I don't know. Than we seem to be pump? we seem to be obsessed with pumps tonight. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> right? Don't <laughs> so well, pump up too much. You might explode and blow your wad yeah. along with every other anatomical part that your penis is comprised of. <laughs> well, so what, they they just, they what about the partner? <laughs> Put it this way, best to go with a smart partner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, wait a minute. Uh, 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 Jeff has his hand up. Yes, Jeff. Well, I was saying, I don't know if anybody knows that, that I really developed a lot of these devices. And that was my that was my business for 35 years or yeah. 40 years. So, and, you know, some of them were very simple things that you're not even impressed with at all. But, but some of them were pretty sophisticated. And... And the, I'll tell you the one thing that we, we I did the multiple numbers is hernia work to, mm. to, oh, really? to fix hernias. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you, uh, are you the guy uh, responsible for the hernia mesh? Uh, that's the one thing that I had nothing to do with the mesh. All of my customers were were selling and producing mesh. And the problem is they used to uh, suture them to get them in. And I came up with all kinds of staple type devices that made them go in almost uh, automatically. Wow. So, so and, uh, yeah. Well, hernias are one of the most common things in America, aren't they? It is, yeah, sure. Pretty much. There's multiple hernias, right? There's a bunch of Yes. Things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have one. Some people can have two. Different places. I, I've developed one yeah. over the years, but, you know, it doesn't bother me that much, so I, <clears throat> I live with it, you know. I consider it part of my contours. Uh, well, do you have a hiatal or an inguinal? Linguinal, you know, down in okay. that area. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what, what was it I heard? You know, you know I got this, uh, this um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, the... Uh, uh, Injection the, in the, your knee? The, 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 the torn <laughs> meniscus. Yes. And um, I found out that that is maybe one of the most common injuries. In the United States, I mean, I can't do that. Yeah, that that the, the treatment for that they did treat it like crazy in this country. Uh, in fact, I was you know I had lunch with uh, with uh, Albert uh, yesterday, and I mentioned my torn meniscus. And he said, "Well, you remember when I had one?" And I he I suddenly remember he was out because he yeah. had an operation on his knee. He said, "That's what it was." <clears throat> he said, "I had a torn meniscus." You know, he is so that's another very common one that and hernias and so on are very, very common. There's a there's a place in um, <clears throat> where this great skiing and right at the bottom uh, where you ski down, there's a whole bunch of surgeons <laughs> ready to fix your knee. Uh, <laughs> just uh, let me let me ask you up, this. No this, waiting. Jeff, this, this is what I think is kind of phenomenal about you is that you are now the recipient of the technology that you helped to create. It's nice. You know, and that's yeah. kind of a nice blessing, isn't it? I, or look, I mean, you or look at it the you, other you, way. <laughs> He's a test subject and the testing's still going yeah. on. Yeah, of course, if I screw up, it's, yeah. it's, it's Ra, nasty. Uh, uh, yes, John. Well, uh, question to Jeff. Were you involved in the the VC filter, the vena cava filter that for trying to keep uh, clots from even getting into the heart, because I have one of those. And, of course, three mm -hmm. times a day on, on TV in the afternoon, you've got, you know, law firms saying, that you know, if you if you die from this, we'll give you lots of money. Gee, thanks. You know? <laughs> it works fine, I guess. I mean, I'm, I haven't yeah. had any clots, though I have all these leg I have legs that are blocked. Do you know which, you know which and, company made that one? Hmm? Do you know which company uh, produced this? Oh, I mean, I, I probably, I'd have to dig into the... Yeah. The stuff that my 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 doctor gave me, but this was a few years ago. Uh, after the stents that they put in both of my legs, uh, upper legs clotted clotted up, and they're like, right. you know, they got and it's like we just gotta make sure that you're not, you know, yeah. we're not gonna loosen anything up and go into your legs. So they said we're giving you a filter. It's, okay, fine, you know, and it's fine. I mean, you know, I guess. Yeah. yeah but I just hate good. it when these guys. You know, all these the the, the law firms are all like. Well, you know, the, the, during, if you dur have dur this, during during yeah. the day, during these uh, during the daytime shows, when basically it's mm -hmm. poor people watching them to begin with, or old people, they're trolling. <laughs> they're trolling for cases, is what they're oh, yeah. doing. You know, 
Hi, I'm Sanford Rubenstein, and here's my partner. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. You know, all those with all those New York Post and and Daily News, uh, you know, headline uh, things on, yeah. uh, on headlines. When on you need a, when you need across, a good lawyer, you need Sandy. a good you need a good sleazy looking lawyer like us. He's yeah. the guy. <laughs> definitely. See, I you, used to my. Uh, I gotta give you this one though. Uh, talk about sle- well, sleazy lawyer, but definitely uh, lawyer. I don't know if everybody knows him, but nationally. Uh, he was pretty well known. Uh, my old recording studio, we used to do a program that was on late night on WOR, and we had Harry H. Lipsig. Remember Harry Lipsig? He was yeah. another one of those Rubenstein type, you know, uh, going. To, and he sounded, he looked like he was about 80 years old, and he'd come in and he'd be like, you know, uh, you know, you know I, I could see he'd be the guy you want on your side. He'd. he'd He'd sue everyone. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but he was uh, that same sort of that same sort of bombastic thing. Jack, and he, you know, Jack has and, his hand and, up. You know, just amazing. Jack. <laughs> What's even worse, though, you know, when we get through with the intersection, there, and I can't just go right to bed, even though Miss Donna would like that. I watch a little television, and they've got all of these commercials on. For the copper pan, the copper griddle. Oh, I love that oh, yeah. shit. I love that shit. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I could watch those for hours. Well, my problem is I want to buy all that oh, shit. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. 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 And, and, why, did you buy and, one? No, Consumer oh, well. Reports just put out a, an article about the different colors and, and what actually works. If you're baking, gold is the most absorbent heat and will cook and brown correctly mm-hmm. but that's if you're baking if you're say you're cooking on the stove top then you do something different but we're, we're not so, we're, you know i'm not talking about that stuff i like the gizmos that do things you know i still want that thing that makes mounds and mounds of coleslaw <laughs> yeah you never I need don't like coleslaw <laughs> You'd, I'll make it sure. You'd never but, uh, need them. Uh, you know, one, one of the things, I don't know, if, Alex, did you have this problem where you had to quit listening to the commercials at the stations that you worked at? Because uh, I'd, I'd finish up a four-hour shift, and I had to have a, uh, a certain kind of burger, or I had to go take a look at this new car they were talking about. It was crazy. I was sitting there brainwashing you know, myself. It's funny that in the last many years, I have never had to listen to commercials that were on my shows, mainly because they came from somewhere else, and we were just sitting around waiting for them to be over with. So we didn't really turn them on or blast them in the studio. Um, Are you fucking bastards? Yeah. No, I mean, uh, <laughs> even when I was in, as far back as in uh, San Francisco, back in the, uh, back in the 80s, uh, I had people in another room who ran all the commercials. So basically in the studio, I didn't hear much of anything. I just waited for somebody to signal to me and say, hey, we're almost ready to go, you know. So I, I luckily didn't have to listen to all those commercials. Only in the last job did I have that. Uh, all those other 40-plus years, you know, I was running my own audio control board and sitting there being brainwashed. Wow. Back when I, you know, back when you knew me uh, uh, in Houston, uh, I was smoking cigarettes, and I changed cigarettes three times in six months because of the commercials I was doing. <laughs> really? Yeah. We, we used to have mm-hmm. cigarette commercials on radio. Yeah. yeah, they went on till 1970. Yeah. I have a bunch of cigarette ads, radio ads, uh, on from like the 50s and 60s. I'll have to send them to Alex anyway because they're they're classic. You know, they're, I, I, you know, I more I, doctors smoke camels than you know, I, I, haven't thought, I haven't thought. I haven't thought about. Unbelievable I haven't thought about this, doing. but you know, we're looking. We we should try and find revenue for Gabnet. And why don't I just sell time to cigarette companies? I don't give hey, a shit. There you go. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Make this any claims you want to. Go back go back to the old claims. Nine out of ten doctors love luckies. You know, I mean, that's fine with me. I don't care. You ought to, as long, you, ought to get, yeah. uh, you ought to get some proctologists on and say nine out of ten proctologists recommend this glove. Yeah. What were you going to say, what were you gonna say uh, uh, John? Well, as long, I mean, as long as you don't get the ad that is, I, I turn off every time I hear it, that jingle 
One eight seven seven cars for kids. Kia. Oh, Have you uh, heard that? It's awful. Yeah. Little uh, kids playing. Oh God, I want to. I want to throttle those. And by the kids. way, they, they said that whole cars for kids thing is a pretty phony deal too. Well, you could. There, oh, there really? are places. Yeah. There are better places. I mean, there there are religious groups and things. And I mean, in New York City, there's a Jewish group that sets. You can donate your car to, and it helps. It, it goes to, to charities. And who knows where this? They they say you donate your car and. But they don't tell you where where that money is going to go. Does it really go to kids? Which kids? The kids of the company owner? <laughs> I mean, you know what? Well, if the religious in, John, if the religious institution happens to be the Catholic Church, they could sell cox for kids. Right. <laughs> oh. 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 Let me bring up something else uh, that's in the news today. And uh, I don't think there's been any resolution to it yet, but it looks like the Cosby jury is going to be a hung jury. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah, haven't seen anything about that just a little while ago. What's your, what's your take on that? Uh, well, we're getting into that 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 area of he said, she said. You know, uh, a lot of folks say, well, well, these women or this woman waited all those years. That's one of the things my wife brought up. Well, I think uh, that, I think that's a logical question to ask. You know, oh, mm -hmm. hang on a second. You have to think back further because. He was a very impressive guy, and he had a lot of status. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. One woman got raped, and she didn't know about the rest no. of the women. She would think that she was going up against a really impressive no, guy. Or, 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 or wait, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. But let's take it the other way. Uh, maybe one of the reasons she fucked him is because he was powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, and the reason he was subject to this is because he was powerful, and that he, you know, the question is. Did he rape her? Did he force her to do something that she otherwise wouldn't have done? I mean, didn't she wind up keeping seeing him after the incident? It sounds so. What yeah. I've heard is kind of sounds like that. So yeah. I'm not a. Oh, all I'm sure. saying, all I'm saying is, is that that um, I I th the damage to Cosby has been done. Whether he's found guilty or not guilty, or a hung jury, or it's thrown out of court, the fact is that the damage has been done. Uh, his, well, except he hasn't gone to prison. Yeah, he hasn't yeah. gone to prison, and I don't think in many cases, uh, usually he necessarily would. I think they it might say he's so old. Let's just you know, house arrest or whatever. Something. Wait a like second, that. didn't we throw some really old white Republican in jail for being a jackass? Well, that's because that's because he's a Republican. There have been a few. <laughs> no, it's just recently we threw some old white well, guy in, in, our, in, our, in that case. We consider it thinning out the herd. Yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, but I mean, uh, I just looked online and they, and the, and the, the jury is still deadlocked. They, they, they shut down at nine o'clock tonight and they're going to start again tomorrow. Yeah. Just so you know, uh, uh, still, yes, still uh, no, still uh, no decision. Jeff. I, th I think a lot of women have a different attitude about about this uh, uh, problem and that uh, they're really negative against them. I don't know, Renee, you tell me. You talk to uh, a lot, maybe a lot, a lot of women who, who have a different feeling about this. But Well, you know, you can have a different feeling about it. I think that the problem here is that maybe she isn't the best test case. I mean, I'm sure, look, I'm sure mm. where there was smoke, there's fire. I'm sure that even if once in his life he did it, okay, and the rest are all lying, that's enough, okay? That's enough to nail him and say, bad, go, go to your room, okay? But the fact is that the, the, one, the only case that they could take out against him was the only one that was still within the statute of limitations, which was this woman, and she may have not been the most creditable one for them to put mm. up, but she was the only thing they had. Now, he did settle a case out of court about 20 years ago mm -hmm. where allegedly he uh, uh, drugged some woman to have sex. I've had women uh, to take drugs to have sex with me. Yeah, know? no, I'm saying I've had women wanting to be drugged just to have sex exactly. with That's me. That's what yeah. I was trying to come yeah. up with. Uh, well, you know, I'll also, I, I, there's a part of me that goes back to those days when a woman would say to me, hey, let's go, you got any drugs back at your place? And you go, yeah, okay. And we go back and we do some drugs and she'd get really high and we'd have sex. Well, you know, she could have later on said, he drugged me, you know.
And, and so Ken actually came up to you and said, what drugs you got? Because like, if I'm going to fuck oh, you, I want to. Oh, least... oh it, yeah, sure. Or, or, or sometimes you would say, hey, I got some drugs back to the house. You want to go back and do some? Uh, I was never pushy. If somebody didn't want to sleep with me, I didn't sleep with them, you know. But the fact is that most of them would get high and they were ready to go. And in those days, that was maybe, I think Jack will agree with me, kind of par for the course. Today, I would never even involve myself in that behavior because of the risk of being, uh, of the misassumption that I was somehow drugging somebody to have sex with them. And I never did it because I never had the drugs. Yeah. Uh, mm. uh, but you know, I, uh, I, and uh, how many how many women did you did you did you know any women who come up to you and they knew you had some drugs or, or but you probably didn't do drugs that much, did you? Me? Yeah. Eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, after I left San Francisco and KMPX, mm -hmm. and I came to the South. I decided the last thing that I wanted to be was a black, a young black man with drugs on him. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I yeah. want to be the yeah. oldest sissy on the sissy bench in Huntsville, Texas. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But, but I, one thing I do want to be is the first guy out of here to get ready for the intersection. Okay. So get, get the hell out oh, yeah. of here. And, uh, hey, and Patrick, call us sometime after Alex's show. I'd like to. Have you as an intersection regular, if you would. He's poaching my guests. <laughs> I'm trolling it's on your network, though. I'm trolling your guests. <laughs> You're trolling. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, you're, you're a gift. Jeff, to your statement, I'm more concerned with the bullshit that went on at Fox News because a it's current. B, it's provable, and C, those people that work there, whether they were male or female had very little choice. Well, and, and and that is a perfect that yeah. now is sad. That is a perfect example. One choice they had yeah. was to not take the job, right? Yeah. Well, but, you were already in it. But I I agree with I agree I know what Renee is saying. The problem with the Fox situation is you actually had a case of powerful people, you know, women who didn't want to say no for fear they would lose their job. Okay. Right. right. Uh, and 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 uh, in, it's a good in, threat. And I want to know where in that company were the people saying this is not good behavior. This is not something we do because it we it puts us in a litigious situation. Who was the human resources director there? Yeah, there was one. Yeah. Actually, I think there was. I think she. I think it was a woman, and she left. I mean, something way back. You know. Uh, well, I mean, when this it, all started coming, they, they she got the heck out. <laughs> you know, I mean, if I, where Rupert Murdoch should have said this should oh, not be going yeah. on. You know, and they had to all know what Ailes was up to. You look at a slob like that with his drooling on everything that comes by him. You know, he's up to no good that way. You tell him you don't touch the merchandise. You know, you never. Uh, you, you, I think the old line is you never, you know, uh, uh, tap the company's uh, merchandise. You know, you don't, you don't uh, have sex with You don't fuck where you eat. You, you don't shit where, shit you, where eat. you eat. Shit where you eat. Or shit where you eat. That's right. Well, both. <laughs> Not that fucking, so, so. fucking Megan would be shitting where you eat, but, you know. <laughs> um, but anyway. Yes, yeah, that bothers me at this particular point in time because what I've read about the Cosby thing is that it it's too hard to prove this far down the line. With Fox, it's right here, right now. Well, Let's see it, it, to, to, it, to keep you happy, to keep you happy, Renee, there are a lot of women now who are getting paid off vast amounts of money for having gone through that experience, and they're being compensated very nicely for it. So they, they, got their, they got their just rewards out of this whole thing. You know. Your pound of flesh. Yeah, they, well, I would, still, I would still like to have airplay so that enough women know that this is not acceptable. Well, of course it's not acceptable. It's never acceptable. Anyway, thank you so much, Renee. I appreciate your call tonight. Patrick, thank you as well. Uh, uh, Brian, thank you. Uh, and of course, Jeff, welcome back. And of course, uh, John Rockwell, always nice to have you here too. Thank you for all being here. We'll see you again, hopefully tomorrow night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Ta-ta. Hey, ta-ta. Anyway, that's a, that's a ta-ta for our, our big show tonight. Uh, we'll be here again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. Uh, the the, uh, the intersection is next with Jack and Amy, and that will be followed by Connections or Conniptions, whatever you want to call it, which uh, comes on at 1 o'clock in the morning. I have had a sinus headache all night and all day. I hope it's not a tumor, okay? Anyway, I'm Alex Bennett. We'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay? Okay.